Next, how are returns and present values related to each other? Well, you can sort of see right away that our ret a return is something like a first difference of the present value relationship. So we have to make that clear. How do you do that? In discrete time, it's pretty easy. The price is the expected discounted payoff. And if you just group all the t plus 1 terms, the price is the expected value of tomorrow's price and tomorrow's dividend. Well, tomorrow's price and dividend divided by today's price is just the rate of return. So what we've done here is from the present value, we've sort of differenced it to get our 1 equals EMMR relationship. Right? So you can go from present values to return relationship, and backwards, you can accumulate the return relationship to find the present value formula. One's just the difference of the other, one's the integral of the other, with quotes around that difference in integral. Now, how do we do that in continuous time? We need to get to the concept of a return in continuous time, and that's going to be our way of doing it. So, what is a return in continuous time? Well, well, I'll use the notation DRT for a return. That is the change in price plus the dividend paid divided by the initial price. As we let the delta shrink, DRT becomes the growth in price plus the dividend uh, payout. Uh, and uh, as you can see, that, that, that concept is a little different. It's a net return. It's the growth in price. We've subtracted off the initial price. Well, to go to continuous time, we have to do Ds of things. And that's why in continuous time, we look at this net return concept rather than a gross return concept. It's also, sometimes it's convenient to keep track of the actual price and dividend and think of the return as the growth in price plus the dividend payout. It's also convenient to define dv over v this way. So v here is a cumulative value process. Um, what that corresponds to, this corresponds to if you bought the stock, you have the price P and you get to eat the dividends X. V corresponds to the idea of put the stock in a fund where all the dividends are continually reinvested, and then V is the price, it's the value of that fund. It's sometimes convenient to look at that way, sometimes convenient to look at that way. Choose whatever's more convenient. So this DR concept, will typically also be a diffusion process. It'll have a mean and it'll have a Brownian element. Uh, returns are, uh, move around a lot through the dp over p term, which will have a, a Brownian element. The x typically will not have a Brownian element to it, to it, at least in the simple versions we do. Okay, now what did we do in discrete time? Uh, in discrete time, we defined a return. And then we, we could have found 1 equals E of MR by differencing our present value relationship. That's our key to how do we think about, how do we express P equals E of MX for returns in continuous time. You start with the present value relationship. Price is expected discounted payoff. Then let's first difference it. Our first step is we break it up into what happens in the first delta instant and then what happens from delta to infinity. You recognize that as tomorrow's price, right? The delta to infinity, that's just the price tomorrow. So we have price today, we have a little bit of a dividend payment, and we have a price tomorrow. I'll apply the famous dot, dot, dot operator, by which I don't show you all the algebra, and you go read that in the notes. But you, do the, you take that, and then a couple more steps, you get to uh, our expression for the equivalent of 1 equals E of MR in continuous time. Let's look at what it says. I have three different expressions. Some are more con convenient than others in different, in different ways. One nice way to write it is that zero is the expected change in discounted value. You might think that, that values ca shouldn't be expected to change, sort of a random walk idea. That's almost right. It is the discounted value that should not be expected to change. Uh, another way of writing that is that zero should be the flow of dividends, uh, which is deterministic, plus the expected discounted change in price. Or, uh, I really don't need that lambda v on the bottom. I put it in there, you'll see it's convenient. Uh, you know, it, it can go in and out of the zero as you'd like. But another way of writing it, the, the purest analogy to 1 equals e of mr, is zero is expected change in discounted value. We'll make that more intuitive in just a second. Finally, uh, so that what does the risk-free rate look like in continuous time? 
Well, a risk-free rate is just a rate of return that doesn't have a DZ term in it. You know ahead of time what the rate of return is going to be. So the, the rate of return is RF times DT. There's no DZ term in a risk-free rate. Now, the, the value of the risk-free rate can change over time. It's not, it's not fixed in that sense, but at any instant, how much you're going to get over the next instant is sure because there's no, no DZ term in the risk-free rate. There's two ways of thinking about a risk-free asset in continuous time. One way of thinking at it is, is a cumulative value process. In other words, you put in $1 initially, and then B is the number, is the value in your, uh, in your account. Uh, say you put it in a money market fund and just leave it there. The value in the money market fund grows over time, and the rate it grows, it grows deterministically at the risk-free rate. Another way of thinking of a risk-free asset is that the value is always 1, but it pays you a flow of dividends equal to RFDT. Uh, so, so they are actually the way money market accounts work is uh, the value is always one, and then they send you uh, a check every month for the, the, uh, the amount of the interest rate. Both of those are, are ways of thinking of the risk-free asset. They both have that property. <sighs> what have we done? <laughs> We've taken our basic ideas of price equals expected discounted payoff and re-expressed them in terms of returns, excess returns, present values, and returns and risk-free rates in continuous time. Uh, once, you've re once you've met those characters and seen how our basic asset pricing formula applies to them, then you're ready to, to uh, see the, the classic statements of the theory of finance about how returns, excess returns, discrete time, and continuous time are determined in how they behave. Thank you.